Thanks for checking out this movie review video. So this is for the 2019 film that is a Shudder exclusive and will be coming to Shudder Thursday the 28th of May. Um, so I'm putting this review out early. This is yet another one of my screener copies. So thank you very much Shudder for hooking me up with this. This is a film confessional and... I want to say off the bat, before I get into my review, that first of all, it's no spoilers since it's not on Shutter yet. So if you want to watch the film, you can watch this and then watch the film and it won't really ruin any any events of the film or um, not even thematic stuff at this point because I'm not going to go too much into that because there isn't a, a ton of that to it. Uh, the other thing I want to say is that I am not the demographic for this film, basically, and I will kind of get a little bit into that as I talk about it. Um, just consider the fact that I'm 39 years old, so I'm almost 40. So this is more for a younger generation, and it's you see that in a few things. Subject matter is one of the things. Also, there are a few things kind of in the filmmaking style that are different, and kind of some of the issues that are brought up within the film are more uh, pertinent to a younger generation. Although, you know, it's stuff that shows up in other things. It's just through the lens of a much younger generation, so... Um, this film is directed by Brad T. Gottfried, who did uh, directed films called The Movie Hero and Orgies and the Meaning of Life. Sounds interesting. That's an interesting title. Written by Jennifer Wolf, who has actually not really done any other feature length uh, script writing. Um, like I said, it's a Shutter exclusive. Lucas Adams. I want to I want to point out that this actor, Lucas Adams, who actually looks a little bit like K.J. Appa for people who know Riverdale. Um, he's the best actor in this. He actually did quite a nice job. And that's kind of one of the, my biggest issues with the film in general, is that the acting is not that great. Um, and it's it's kind of serviceable, and it would be even more so if it was done in, in like a normal filmmaking mode. But it's kind of done as like a quasi-found footage film. So... Um, when you do something like that, you really need the actors to be really strong and to really sell their performances as being real life, as being like it's found footage, like someone is acting normally for who they are as a person. And I don't feel like that came through in this. Um, the script is is a solid script when you really kind of like pay attention to it. But um, the acting just didn't it didn't deliver it well because this script needed very strong actors to really sell a quasi found footage film because that's all you have in this film pretty much. It is confessional. It takes place almost solely inside a confessional booth. So all you have is the actors to rely upon. You, you don't have anything else. You don't have creatures. You don't have practical effects, special effects, CG. You don't have any of that stuff to distract from the acting that's going on right in front of you. So those actors had to really, really, really be convincing, and for the most part, they're not. Although Lucas Adams did a really good job, but he's one character amongst a bunch, and he doesn't get nearly enough screen time, in my opinion, for how good of an actor he was. Now, I will say some of the actors and actresses actually improve as the film goes on a little bit, um, but once again, I just I don't feel like the performances were, were sold. I don't think it feels realistic to what's actually going on. And that's the biggest downfall of this film, in my opinion. Now, um, like I said, it's set up as a quasi-found footage film. Not a bad idea. It, you know, it's kind of a tired thing. But the fact that it's not straight up found footage, uh, it's kind of like a quasi-found footage idea. That's fine. Now, the directing is done relatively well for this. And part of the reason being is it's kind of... It's set in this, you know, confessional booth, so you're going to have stationary cameras. Now, they do have cameras positioned in different places in the booth, and it, there are some kind of, like, weird asides where, like, the, it'll switch to the view of, like, one on the side of a, of a character, and while they're supposed to be, like, talking, they kind of, like, look over to the camera, but it doesn't make sense, like, that they would actually do that when they're talking in this confessional. So there's just kind of, like, these weird moments like that. But for the most part, directing is is pretty solid. Uh, it looks relatively good. The confessional booth has a cool look to it. I really like how they designed the confessional booth. It, um, you'll see what I mean. Um, there was some cool kind of, like, lighting strips added to it that are used to pretty cool effect where they kind of change the color of the lighting. And a lot of it has to do with what's going on in the film. So it's it like signals different moods in a sense. And I like that aspect of it. The changing of the lighting was cool. The booth in general looks really cool. Very sleek, very um, 
it also makes it like a little bit scary and mysterious at the same time and i like that about it the music is actually good in this too i thought they did a really good job it has a lot of kind of like low rough scratchy noises that kind of conveys a little bit of discomfort a little bit of tension and yeah music was good and it was well used um like i said acting that's the biggest problem with this how the story's told lends itself to making a very low budget film that doesn't feel like more money was actually needed for it now like i said they just really needed to get you know for the most part better actors but um when you look at it from a money standpoint like you know set design costuming um effects all that type of stuff with the story that's being told and within the parameters that they do it which is just this confessional booth you don't feel like they needed more money to do a whole lot more because of the world they kind of create it's like okay this is what it is and you kind of accept that premise so it was a good job establishing that um it's it, so many times when you're watching low budget films you're like oh man if they only had a higher budget if they only had a higher budget for this one it's just if they only had some better acting so which it's not a good thing um, there's text that ends up being intercut uh, with the confessional interviews, which I feel is a little bit odd. And it kind of takes you out of the flow of things from time to time. And it also, like, some of what gets put in text seems like it's very inconsequential and that it, they, they should have not taken away from what, they, what momentum they were building at that point. Some of these things seem very trivial and it's just like, it's just there because, and it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. It's like, okay. Um, it also tells you things that should be conveyed through the acting and the story, which this type of stuff really drives me crazy. Show me. Tell me through the acting of the actor. Tell me through the dialogue. Tell me through what the story is going through. Do not, do not have this text come up and tell you what you were supposed to get out of a section of someone acting, uh, out of someone's dialogue. And they do that. They don't do it a lot, but they do that a few times. And that's the type of stuff that really, really bothers me. Because that kind of says, hey, stupid audience member, let me tell you what you're supposed to get out of this. I can get it if the film's good. I'll get it. So that's just one thing that really, really bothers me is when filmmakers insult the intelligence of their audience. I don't dig that. They, uh, the lighting color changes, I already talked about that, that I quite enjoyed. Now, text messages come up in this, like actually on the screen. And this is interesting because I, I can see like some people in older generations, like my generation and older, who would see this in film and just be like, that's, that's weird, we don't need that. But we do. Um, it's for a younger generation and it's being done by a younger generation of filmmakers. And that's a very big part of life right now. So... Its incorporation into film is important, and it makes a whole lot of sense. So I'm good with it. And honestly, the way they integrated it into this film, I thought it worked. Uh, it didn't feel out of place. It didn't feel clunky or anything like that. And the fact that they put it up kind of like on the side of the screen so you could still see the actor and everything, that was well-placed and well done. Um, the editing is pretty good with this film too, by the way. That kind of leads me to that. Um, there's some in, in, uh, eh, sorry, increase in interest when it seems they're trying to solve a mystery finally in this. Um, but for the first like 25 minutes, they're establishing characters. So that goes a little bit slow. It really does drag. Once you hit get past that 25 minute mark, you start to be like, oh, there's something that we're going to work to solve here, basically. Now that lead me, leads me to another thing about this film is, is it a horror film? No, I don't really think it's a horror. Are there some kind of horrific type elements to it? Sure, but it's super light. It is more of like a mystery, quasi-thriller, I guess. Uh, but a lot of it is drama. It seems like it kind of falls into that kind of like teen drama realm, but a little bit more adult, uh, kind of like a Riverdale or something like that. Now, I'm not saying that to slam it. I'm just saying generationally, me being like 39, I don't connect with it as much. So maybe a younger crowd would really connect with it more. And I could see that. Uh, the other thing is, I will just say, like, I watch Riverdale. I actually like Riverdale. So it's not a slam when I say that something's like Riverdale. Um, I like it. I think it's well done. I mean, yes, it's on the lighter side, but it's good. Um, but yeah, so just know that about this. It's got that feel to it. 
there's such a focus on substances in this, at least early on, about drugs and alcohol and the abuse of those things, that it kind of starts to feel a little bit like a PSA. You know, like those old PSAs would be like, just say no to drugs. And like uh, interviews with like, I used to have a friend and then they started doing drugs and then I lost him forever. Like there's some of that in there that you're just like, okay, we're hitting this a little bit hard. Let's take it back a little bit. Like you can talk about it. You can address it in the film. But it felt like they kept going after it a lot to the point where it was very preachy about that. And it's like everyone knows drugs are bad. Let's move on. There is a, I'm not going to spoil this, but there's a premise introduced in the story that seems to be really far-fetched. It doesn't actually, I thought it was going to play a much larger role in the grand scheme of things, and it didn't, which I was very glad about, because it's so far-fetched that if they were um, hanging their hat on this as, as something to be super significant in it, that I was going to be like, nope, 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 but they didn't. They kind of like got away from it relatively quickly, so I was like, thank goodness. But... Um, a really weird premise that just does not work. Um, so kind of to wrap up a little bit, some of my final thoughts on it. Um, in order for this film to really work, the actors had to sell it because that's all there is to it. They're just not selling it in this, uh, except for Lucas Adams, in my opinion. It's definitely more for a high school or college audience. It feels like a more adult version of something like Riverdale, which I said, it's very much driven by young drama. There's There are like some kind of gossipy elements to it. It is very high school, college drama type thing. Now that said, for those generations, for that audience, it does tackle a lot of kind of current societal issues. So I could see it being very topical for people like that and really engaging and relatable. So, um, yeah, uh, a lot comes up dealing with male and female struggles in the current societal climate. So it is very um, reflective of our current times. So that's good. I mean, that's what a lot of what a lot of horror does. But this is like I said, it's not really horror. But anyway, it's uh, for that reason, it's it did a good job of kind of relating to society and how things are currently. So, um as you can tell, I'm not a huge fan of this. Like I said, it's generationally, this is not for me. Uh, there are some things I appreciate about it, which I laid out in this. There are some things I really didn't. Uh, I just think that with a much better cast, this could have been a much more interesting and better film. Um, and it just kind of sucks. Uh, and I guess that is a part where the budget does come into it because you can't get much better actors when you don't have the money to pay these much better actors. So it's unfortunate, but... All right, with uh, five stars possible, half stars in play, I'm going to give this a one and a half star rating. Um, I know that seems harsh, but, you know. But just remember, this is a personal thing. This is for me personally. There may be people out there who feel very differently about this. And I would say I just like that people do film. So even when I'm slamming a film like this and giving it one and a half stars for me personally, it doesn't mean that I don't appreciate that the filmmakers are making film. I do, and I have a lot of respect for that because am I making film? No. Is that a hard thing to do? Yes. So I do appreciate that. Anyway, uh, thanks for checking this out. Please put comments down here, especially if you feel differently about this film or you want to talk about it. We can do that. We can do spoilers down there. And then do me a quick favor. Give me a thumbs up if you like any videos I do. That's your best way to repay me. It literally takes you a second and it's totally painless. And if you are going to subscribe, if you want to know when I have new videos coming out or you want to know when I'm starting my live streams, uh, which I'm doing, every other weekend, uh, hit that notification bell and you will get those notifications. Also, uh, if you've already subscribed, go ahead and hit thumbs up on my videos just to keep me encouraged. And uh, yeah, thank you. But uh, thanks for spending your time watching this. And until next time, keep it brutal.